Hallelujah. So we're going to be talking about the ministry of helps or the helps ministry, however you want to say it, the ministry of helps. And it is a valid ministry in the Word of God, is that we're, we're, which we'll see, that is just as important as the ministry of the apostle. Yeah. We think apostle. Ooh, that's, that's the big guns. It, it's no bigger than the ministry of helps. That's right. Hallelujah. Or the prophet's ministry. Ooh, yeah, the prophet. Mm, prophesy. No, actually, God's more excited about the ministry of helps. Because, uh, actually, without the ministry of helps, uh, the prophet's ministry is a total dud. Amen. Uh, God is not the author of the 80-20 rule. Y'all know what that is. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Anybody ever felt that? Anybody ever lived that? Yeah. Uh, maybe on your job? It, it's a pretty common thing, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, we, we call it a rule, but really, is it a rule? It, it's just human nature. Yeah. Hey, if somebody else has got it covered, I'm good. But that is not God's way. Amen. He is not the author of the 80-20 rule. God is the author of the 100% rule. Let me read a scripture to you here for a moment. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, there down a ways into the chapter, this is the Amplified, because of him the whole body, the church, in all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments with which it is supplied when each part, say each part, each part, part. all right, all right, how much of your body is non-functioning, just useless, of your physical body. Well, hopefully not any. I mean, there's miracle power, healing power is here today, and we can get you help, but if there's a part of your body that is not functioning, there's a problem. Hallelujah. And we know this, that the church is the local body. I mean, we're part of the universal body of Christ, but God recognizes local churches as bodies. And but as, as we look around, and, and, and really, the, the larger the church, the, the greater the issue of the 80-20 rule. Right. Well, what happens is so often the, the large churches, they get enough income coming in that they just go ahead and pay people to serve. Well, that's not God's best. You know, you just have a a handful of people doing all the work because they're there five days a week, 50 to 60 hours a week, busting it out. When God's plan is every part. Notice it says when each part, or you could say when every part with the power, with power adapted to its need, is working properly. Everybody say, working properly. Working properly. In all its functions, grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. Each part. So there's no part of your physical body. That's the analogy that God uses really clearly throughout the Scripture, is our physical body is an example of the church body. And so you're, it's important that all of your physical body functions normal, that every part is healthy. You know, even parts that the medical profession doesn't place great importance on, well, you can, you can make it without that. Well, yeah, you can live without it. But, you know, God didn't put any parts in you that weren't necessary. Yeah, there are parts you can make it without. You know that. Some of y'all have parts missing. We won't get into details. But, you know, I mean, we know about gallbladders and, you know, appendix and different parts. You know, you can make it on 
one kidney. Right. But it's not, it's, not the, it's not the best. And so the same with the local body, the church. The church is at its best when all the parts are functioning the way God designed them to. And so when God calls a, a local church, calls a body together, he, to that he calls people that function and fit together so that everything is supplied. So really, this, this really quickly moves us away from the mentality of, yeah, I attend church, to, yeah, I'm involved in my local church. I serve in the helps ministry in my local church. Why? Because there's a supply. There's a blessing in it. Hallelujah. Uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. It says, And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings. We're talking about ministries here. Then notice what he says next. Helps. That's listed. Ministries in the church listed along with apostles, prophets, right? Teachers. Miracles would really be associated in healings with the evangelist ministry. Administrations is this translation. That, that has to do with pastors. Well, the helps ministry is right in there with the others. Do you see that? The helps ministry. The interesting thing about ministry, when God calls somebody to ministry, there's always a grace, there's an anointing to do that. There is an anointing. Just like on the apostles' ministry, there is an anointing for somebody to be an apostle, a true apostle. Now, we're in a time where it's popular to buy a piece of paper that gets you degree, and you can call yourself Dr. Apostle Yabba-Dabba-Doo, or Prophet Yabba-Dabba-Doo. Right. Um, and, it's, and it's always like the, 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 the big stuff, you know. They don't sell as many that are like, you know, teacher. That just gets all flesh anyway, <laughs> right? But there's an anointing for somebody to be an apostle. There's an anointing for somebody to who's called to be a prophet. That anointing is provided with that office. And that anointing is what enables them to do it. A prophet without the anointing is just flesh. You don't want to listen to what they have to say. There's a bunch of them out there. They're just prophesying out of their head, talking. And we're to judge it, you know. You know, and every time something changes, they change their prophecy. Whoosh, just flush it. No, they're, we're to judge it. How do you judge it? Is it coming to pass? Is it happening? And you know, it's popular to prophesy. There's all kind of school, school of the prophet. I'm sorry, I don't mean to go on a tangent this morning, but there's so much error, error right now with it. <laughs> but a, a true prophet has the anointing, and they minister with the ability that that anointing gives. It's not in their own natural ability. The pastor, the teacher, the different ministry gifts, they are anointed, some to a greater degree than others. Some of that because of the grace that's on their life, what God's called them to do. Some of that anointing, the, the, the level of that anointing has to do with their own personal life. Do they have a prayer life? Do they pray? Or do they study the Word of God? And to the, great, the, the more that they give themselves to that, that anointing increases and not just 
you know, you studied today, so boom, the anointing level is high. <laughs> no, it's over time. It grows, right? Well, the same thing is true. There is an anointing on the ministry of helps. And that anointing is the same. It can grow based on the individual, how they conduct their lives, their, their character. Do they have a prayer life? The same thing. And it is a ministry, an anointed ministry that is as important as the other ministry gifts. The issue that we have so often is that we look at natural things and equate value according to the flesh and what we see. But in the body of Christ, we, we are all part of the same body. There's not big eyes and little U's. God is no respecter of persons. So that means somebody that is in the ministry of helps, and I love this about God, it doesn't matter what your job description in the body or title is if you're called to be a, a prophet to the nations, an apostle to the nations, or called to serve in the helps ministry in a local church. There is no greater reward available to the apostle or prophet than what's available to the helps minister. Now think about that. Let, let that... I mean, process that for a moment because that is completely contrary to what human thinking says, to what the flesh says. Flesh says, oh man, they're, they're apostle and they fly around the world on an airplane and they have all the VIP treatment and they do all these things and man, they just, they just like are, are really wealthy and you know, they just, they're just, they've got a greater ministry so they get greater reward. <laughs> That's not true. When you do what God has called and anointed you to do, all the same reward is available to you. But see, if we don't think that way, and mostly we don't, we, we, just, we just settle. We just settle. And the whole time, that reward is available. Hallelujah. Now, to an apostle, now there's a, you know, God calls you to be an apostle or a prophet or whatever. There's a lot of responsibility there. And so they're accountable at a much higher level. And, you know, from the outside, it all looks wonderful. But <laughs> it's not all fun and games. Amen. There's a lot, a lot of responsibility. Praise God. So I'm just wanting to bring <clears throat> for you into perspective the helps ministry <clears throat> because if you're not called to the, what we refer to as the five-fold ministry, then you are called, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of the body to the helps ministry. But it's not a lesser ministry. It is not a lesser ministry. It is not a lesser anointing. It's a different anointing. Just like a prophet anointing is different than a, a teacher or a pastor. It's just different. It's not worth more. It's not more valuable. It's not greater rewarded. It's just, it just has a different purpose. So the purpose for which God anoints you is different than the way he anoints me. The, the anointing to pastor comes on me, not for me to feel goosebumps. It comes on me to minister to you. The anointing to pastor comes on me to minister and serve you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so in the same manner, the anointing as a helps minister comes on you to serve in whatever capacity you serve. And there's an anointing to do it. Hallelujah. We have, we have 
Now, many of you here have been in helps ministry for years. And it's wonderful. Actually, we're going to be having a helps banquet, a helps ministry banquet coming up in August. But, you know, the, the worship team, they're not just volunteers. They're not. God has called them and anointed them. I love a book uh, Jannie Grind wrote many years ago. She's in heaven now. But it was, it, she, being a worship leader, she wrote it in particularly, it, but it, it covers many things, but to musicians and, and worship team people. It's called, the name of the book is called Appointed Anointed. If, if you ever happen to have an opportunity to read it, you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Um, called Appointed and anointed. And so the worship team, they are a great example of the helps ministry. Hallelujah. I, know I served in that capacity for a lot of years. I served as, on the worship team at the local church back in Connecticut, playing saxophone on the worship team. When I went out to Ramah uh, on the church worship team there, and then on, you know, to, to travel with Dad Hagen on the crusade team playing saxophone. And I know, I, I know I, I've lived it. And listen, listen here, the helps ministry is not, you know, just an entry level position that some people just, they never graduate from. No, God doesn't work that way. Now, uh, people who are called the pulpit ministry generally pretty much always start in the helps ministry uh, because there, there's, so much, there's so much there. That's, there's so much life there, so much learning and growing in that, but it's not the stepping stone to greater things. Uh, that's something we're going to have to really work on our thinking. Because so many people see, well, I'm, I've been in help ministry for 10 years now, and it's really time for me to be promoted. Well, no. That's not, that's not God's plan. If you're in the place He's called you to, all the promotion you need is right there. It's right there. We get our eyes on natural things. And we, we, have, we get a desire. You ever been around somebody who has a, a dream or a plan for their life, and they're just so excited about it after a little bit of time of hanging around them? Pretty much, pretty, you get to the place where, you know, that's what I want to do too. You know what I'm talking about? I've been there. You know, you just get around these charismatic personalities and they're just, you know, things are popping and happening and, you know, they're just talking and, you know, and you're like, yeah, that's what I want to do. But it's really just because it's what they want to do. You, you tend to kind of gravitate towards, but no, God's got something for you. He's got something for me. That is for me. It's not what somebody else wants. But see, sometimes we get our eyes on that. And so we begin, you can begin to have a desire for things that are not necessarily God's promotion. Y'all getting that? And really, it doesn't, it doesn't fit you. And, and many people have done things in their own thinking, own strength, and they get into it, and there's really not any grace or anointing for them to do that. Many times in, in pastoring, there's people that have, they have good people skills, they're good communicators, they've been successful in business, they have a heart for ministry, and so they say, oh, you know what, I I'm going to be a pastor. And so they start a church. And they're great at organizing people. 
there's natural things that they have, but there's really no anointing there to pastor. And so many times they die prematurely, they crash and burn, you know, things just go awry because it wasn't God's purpose and plan for them. They just, they became misguided because of what they saw and in their, mind, in their thinking, bless their heart, I mean, they, they mean well, but in their thinking, they, they, they feel like, well, that's the next thing for me. I want to help people more. Well, they just, many times they, they, they weren't hooked up with a good pastor who, who, they, who they would listen to. You know, it's one thing to be hooked with a good pastor. It's another thing to listen to a good pastor. And he heed, right? And so they'd made mistakes. But what my point here is that the helps ministry is not like entry level. And when you've been in it for a while, then you graduate to greater things. No. It's like, no, if God calls you to pastor, you know, and you do that for a while, well, God's calling me to greater things now, and I'm going to become an apostle. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to plant multiple churches. In fact, we're going to have a campus on the south side, on a campus there. We're going to have multiple churches because I'm an apostle. God's called me as an apostle now because I've been a successful pastor. That's just natural man. No, if God didn't call you to be an apostle, you'll never graduate. That, that's, that, that, wouldn't be a, that would be a complete demotion out of, the, out of the plan and purpose of God, wouldn't it? Why would you want that? You, you understand how sometimes the way we think is goofy? It's not really in line with the word, but it sounds, it seems good to the natural mind. But God has called us to a place. He has called you to a ministry. So not just as an ambassador, ambassador to preach the gospel, to proclaim the good news, but he has called you within the body. Remember the scripture read, it says, every joint supplies. Every part supplies. And there's not one part of the body of Christ that, do, that is not anointed. There is a grace. What do you mean grace? A supernatural ability. A grace to do. To do. I, you know, when I, well, I was, I was born again when I was just a little guy. I have just, you know, grew up in church, loving God, watching my, seeing my parents in church, Serving God. And so, and you know, serving God means serving his people. You can't serve God without serving his people. That is the primary part of serving God is serving people. You, you can't get away from it. Serving people. And so I, I grew up in that. So when, I, when we started going to a church, what I would refer to as a word church, and hearing more, although was, we were raised in a, in a, in a, a good church, but hearing more, uh, especially the teaching of, of Kenneth Hagin and really growing in the things of God, and me personally uh, getting filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 18 and becoming hungry, and growing in God, I just wanted to be around the things of God. I just wanted to help. I just wanted to be involved and serve. And I noticed that there was a grace, an ability to do it. And the more I gave myself to that, the stronger it became. And there was something about it that was just so satisfying. I, I was not looking forward to, you know, yeah, I, I'm doing this because, you know, I can't wait. Because eventually here, you know, because the, the pastor likes me because I just serve good, that he, he's going he's gonna to have me teach. I had no such desire. All I wanted to do was serve. That was it. Just serve. And that's where... The blessing was in my life. I just was so blessed as a young man 
serving in church. I would do anything. I, I didn't care. And because, you know, God, one of the, just the natural abilities that I have is just to work with my hands. Build it, fix it, just whatever. And it didn't matter what it was. And a, a mechanical background as a machinist and all that, I mean, I could, th- th- there wasn't much I couldn't fix or figure out. And so the, 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 the joy and the satisfaction in my heart of using that in the local church. It was, and, and, and coupled with that, as on a, on a personal basis, as I continued to grow in God and my prayer life grew and growing in the Word of God, the anointing, the ability to help increased. And, and wisdom, as I was helping, wisdom on how to help. And just simply serving the pastor. I didn't, I didn't want to be the pastor. No desire to be the pastor. I didn't want to preach. I was on the worship team. And then, uh, you know, I was working a part-time job. We had just, the church had just moved into a new building that required, it, it started out as an old, it was a Catholic church. Big brick building, stained glass windows, and they bought it, and so they were completely renovating every square inch of it. And so, you know what I was happy to do when I wasn't working my part-time job? I was there with the tools I had, and, uh, you know, paint, do electrical work, I mean, limited electrical work, you know, not big stuff, but just whatever, carpentry stuff, sweeping floors, I didn't care. Something in my heart. Why? Because I was called, God called me to the helps ministry. There's something on the inside of you as a born-again believer there's something God has placed on the inside of you that fits this local body. A part that God has given you. And there's nothing in life, there's no promotion on a, on a job that you have anywhere. There's nothing that will satisfy your heart like bringing that which you have to the church. That is a grace that God has given you as part of the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you see that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. The ministry of helps is an honorable ministry. It is just as honorable as being called to the fivefold. See, our natural mind, we think, oh, yeah, I, you know, I volunteer at church. That's what the natural man says. The spiritual man says, no, God called me and anointed me to serve. Yes. Amen. I am a helps minister. So I, I thought of the idea just coming this morning with my old tennis shoes and blue jeans and T-shirt and, you know, Say, hey, y'all, and just, you know, I'm sorry, I was up late last night, you know, we were out doing some things, and, you know, we went to the movies, and, you know, I had something to fix when I got home, so I I really haven't prepared, you know, a a big message, so we're just going to kind of see, you know, how service goes today. Well, that would be totally dishonorable, wouldn't it? And you shouldn't listen to me. If I were to do that, because I show no honor for the office myself, there's not going to be any anointing there. There's not going to be any grace on me to serve you, because I'm just totally shirking my responsibilities as a minister. That's because, oh, well, you're the pastor, and the pastor should do that. But remember, the pastor's ministry is no greater a ministry than the help's ministry. See, but the devil works the natural thing. He works the natural mind. So we think, well, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just working the children's today. You know, 
Yeah, well, you know, you know, if I don't show up, they'll, they'll find somebody. What if I don't show up? <laughs> oh, I'll just get, they'll get Pastor Kendall. She can do it. And she can. She do a great job. But that's not right. What's going to happen to the anointing on my life? Yeah. Yeah. Short circuit it. And I also forfeit the reward yeah. of being faithful to do what God called me to do. Right. Well, then now, now you're getting into stuff that hurts. Because when there's no reward. Right? But see, the enemy, may, the, the enemy plays down the importance of the help's ministry and the anointing that God supplies with that and the reward that comes with serving. Remember, Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. God himself, Jesus, the Son of God, came to the earth, laid aside all of his deity, all of that came and was born a man in the most humble way. He had every right to come down and haul his majesty and his glory and say, everybody's going to bow down and serve me. But he didn't. He said, I came to serve, not be served. Hallelujah. Mm, that just takes a natural think, a natural mind, and it goes. You know when the chiropractor takes your head, and he says, just relax a little bit, and he goes. And you're like. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The local church will never fulfill the plan and purpose that God has called it to without a thriving helps ministry, without the members functioning in the anointing and in the place that God designed them to function in. Hallelujah. Well, this is exciting because this is, a, this is something we can do. This is a change that we can make an adjustment in our thinking to begin to walk in more of the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Gosh, there's so many ways we can go here. Um, again, the reward is, it has to do with being faithful with the part God gives you, not with the natural things. Like, you know, look at, I, I look at different ministers I do just like you do. And you see the things they're doing, the places they're going and all that, and you're thinking, man, you know, I should be flying around like that. Well, first of all, I mean, if that's not what God called me to do, I might get on a plane in a crash, get out of the will of God. That's no fun. But their reward... The, the promotion that God has for your life in your career, the, the, the way that, you know, the, the job, your occupation, if that's what God has placed you in, is more connected, that, re, that supply is more connected with how you serve the body in your place than it is what you do on your job. Because when you take care of God's things, you place yourself in a special position where God will reward you. Just like preachers get rewarded in different ways, there's all the reward that fulfills your heart, your desire, and your dream when you are obeying God. Hallelujah. When you're obeying God, doing what you're called to do. Hallelujah. Can you see that? Amen. Can you see that? But see, if we just downplay it, I, I decided that we have, we're not going to have any more volunteers at Faith, Faith Life Family Church. We are getting rid of all the volunteers. Anybody who was volunteering, we're giving them the, the opportunity to become a helps minister. 
And we're going to be laying hands on everybody at this helps banquet. We're going to be laying hands on all the helps ministers. Hallelujah. And we've done that some, but we're going to, this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be with some revelation of what we're really doing. We're commissioning people to the ministry of helps that recognize the anointing and the ability that God give, gives to serve and bring their part. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's so much opportunity here, y'all. It's really exciting. And when you, when you give yourself to it, when you, when you, when you lean into it, you're going to realize the blessing of God on your life. The anointing of God on your life is just going to increase. Because God, you can't serve God and not be rewarded. And not be rewarded. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody say, thank God for the ministry of helps. Hallelujah. So, listen to this. Matthew chapter 25. Let's turn there for a moment. Verse 14. Matthew 25. We're not going to get through all this today. We're going to continue on next week and and farther as the Spirit of God directs us. 25.14. This is the parable of the talents. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And he gave to one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents, came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So you understand that the five-talent person, the two-talent person, got the same reward, didn't they? The one who received one talent said, Lord, you're a hard man reaping where you haven't sown, you know, and gave this excuse why he buried it, and here's your one talent back again. Did the man with one talent have the potential to receive the same reward as the man with five? Yes. 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 If the one had just gone and said, Lord, here I have two. I went and I gained another. Here's two talents. Jesus would have said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been Faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. It was simply in that one talent man's thinking that he minimized himself. He minimized that and did nothing with that one talent. And he had the potential for all the same reward as somebody who had been given much more. Hallelujah. So that means that you... Whether you see yourself as a five-talent person or a one-talent person, it doesn't matter. The reward potential for you in being faithful with God, what God has given you is just as great as somebody called to be an apostle to the nations. Hallelujah. That's true. All right, let me be Bill Winston for a moment. Say amen to that. <laughs> That's what you Say amen to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But see, in our mind, if we minimize our part, well, I'm just a volunteer. Yeah, they need somebody. 
You see what you're doing with your reward and your potential? You're just flushing it. You, you can't afford to do that. Don't you want to hear Jesus say, well done. Jesus is not looking at your part as just, well, it's just, you know, it's just so and so. We're just going to give her this little bit right here. You know, that'll, that'll kind of keep her busy. No. He has for you, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will make you ruler over many. You understand this, that uh, after we're raptured, when Jesus comes back, the church is raptured, hallelujah, and the tribulation is over, and we come back and we rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Hmm. Ruling and reigning, that means responsibility. Uh, this, this earth, we're going to rule over the nations of this earth. He's going to be looking for people that were faithful. You, whether you were an apostle or served in the children's, at that point, won't matter. Amen. What matters is, were you faithful on this side? Were you faithful with what you, he gave you here? He'll make you ruler over much based on with what you do now. So the, the thinking that people are like, yeah, you know, I, I go to that church there. I'm really not involved. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really busy, uh, my, my job and everything I have going on, so I really can't make a commitment. What do you suppose is going to happen when the Lord of the harvest comes back? I, I don't want to be there. Well, you know, Lord, it was just, you know, it was just a, it was just a small church, you know, we were, you know, kind of in, in, a, in a field there in Warner Robins, and, you know, so, you know, so many, you know, we know so many of the people, they got, you know, they got, they've got big churches, you know, and if we had a big church. No, that thinking is the same thinking that says, well, yeah, I'm just a greeter. I just stand at the door and say hi to people when they walk in. That's right. I don't ask them, you know, how they founded the church or how, why. I don't ask them questions. I just say hello. Welcome to Faith Life. So glad that you're here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all greeters know what we're talking about. Amen. All right. Well, we won't go too far that direction. But God is looking for what you do now. What you do now is so important concerning eternity. No, we're not just all going to be up there sitting on a cloud, being fanned and eating grapes and, and cheese. No, we're going to be serving the Lord, ruling and reigning over many, over much. Hallelujah. That's why. Yeah, just, yeah, your local church is far more important than what most people realize. Hallelujah. Um, we'll, get, we'll get to this and we'll wrap it up for today. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10, it says, For we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to Him or to the Lord. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Uh, the Amplified, I like this translation uh, better. It says, For we all must appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ. This isn't a place where we're judged for our sins. No, this is a place where we're judged based on how we live this Christian life as a believer what we did with the plan and purpose of God, right? So it says, uh, before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body. When it says in the body, that means while we lived in the flesh, while we lived here on the earth in his body. Whether good or evil, considering what his purpose and motive have been and what he has achieved, been busy with and given himself and his attention to accomplishing. 
Now that one right there, that, that amplified, is worth spending some time meditating on that because, you know, the scriptures say the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. And that's a scripture there that will help you get your thinking right and discern between your thoughts, your intentions, and motives. Hallelujah. Listen, your career, your job is not the most important thing in your life. It's on down the, the, the totem pole a ways. Hallelujah. The plan of God is number one. And what God has called you to do and how he has called you to serve, that's up at the top. Y'all realize Jesus is coming real soon. You see it's nuts in the world. You know the tribulation could just about begin soon. We're going to be out of here before that. I'm not hanging around. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The ministry of helps. It's honorable. It is a high calling. It's worthy of our best. It's worthy of 100%. It's worthy of faithfulness toward it. Can you see that? Amen. Well, we're going to unhook there for today.